In this video, I will show you how to prepare a court chart and give you different options for annotations you can use with CSI picks. I'll show you how to create illustrations like these. This is a step-by-step -step process you can follow to create court charts. In this procedure, I'm assuming you already have determined that the two prints match. If anyone wants the document that I've created to go with this, just reach out and let me know. Step 1 is to load two images. Usually put the latent on the left and the known on the right. Step 2 is to calibrate both images if necessary. Click Calibrate on the menu bar and use the appropriate calibration function to calibrate each image. I have a video dedicated to this that you can watch. The third step is to enhance both images if necessary. Click Enhance on the menu bar and use the appropriate enhancement functions for each image. These are screen grabs from the example I'm going to give at the end of this presentation. The original images are here on the left. The left image is 1000 ppi, the right image is 500 ppi. For the enhancements, all I did was invert the left image and a slight levels adjustment on the right image to increase contrast. Step 4 is to rotate the latent if necessary. You would do this if the two prints are not oriented in the same direction. You would click Rotate on the menu bar and use the Align to Images function. You must tell the software which image to rotate. This would usually be the latent print. Then you must tag two features, as precisely as possible, that are visible on both images. So point 1 on the left side must be the same feature as point 1 on the right side, and the same thing for point 2. When you've tagged the points, click Align and the image you have chosen to rotate will do so. This is before and after the align function. The stars in this side show the points I use as my references. The fifth step is the synchronized crop. Ensure that the lock zoom is on. Turn on the grid and align the two images by moving a matching feature on each side with the center point on the grid. Then you click lock pan. At this point you can turn off the grid if you like. Now you need to zoom out so that you can see the whole latent print, or the whole known print if that's your procedure. Click Crop on the menu bar and select Synchronize Crop. Draw the box so that it contains the areas of interest and click Crop on the docker. At this point you'll be asked if you want to add a white border around each image. Set the percentage to 50 or 60 percent and then click OK. This left image shows where I drew the boxes during the synchronized crop, and this is the result after the synchronized crop. The two cropped images with the white border around each of them. Step 6 is to annotate the images. Open the annotation docker and annotate as required. Some of the options include using magnified views, arrows, straight lines, dots, circles, and ridge tracing. You can also add an agency logo. Here are some examples where I've used magnified views and I've inserted our company logo up here. In this side I've used ridge tracing. On the left side here I've used dots and on the right side I've annotated with the arrows. When you have the side-by-side -side images annotated you can save that as a chart. So to save the completed chart as it's displayed on your monitor, click File on the menu bar and click on Save Comparison View as Displayed. This will join both images and save the resulting image in a format that you choose, like JPEG, TIFF, Bitmap. This image can then be imported into PowerPoint or Word. Note, when you save a comparison view, CSIPix will automatically save a history text file with the details about all the enhancements, cropping, and rotation performed on each image. The history's file will be saved with the same name and in the same directory as the image file. It'll just have a .txt at the end. So here are some saved charts with the different annotation types. This first one has magnified views, the second one has ridge tracing, this third one has dots, and the fourth one has arrows. And the final thing is to print a court chart within CSI picks. 
So to print a hard copy of a chart as it's displayed on your monitor, click File on the menu bar and click on Print Comparison View as Displayed. Or you can copy and paste the Compare View into a Word document or PowerPoint and print from there. I'll show an example of this. This is the type of thing that you can create if you paste your compare view into a form that you've created in Word. And I'll show you how to do this. So I've loaded my latent on the left and my known on the right. They're both calibrated, so I don't need to go through that. I'll lock the zoom. I'm going to invert the left image. So I go to Enhance and just click Invert. I'm not going to bother with the levels adjustment on the right because I want to make this a quick demo. Now I need to align these images. So I am going to go to Rotate, Align Two Images. I want to rotate the left, click Next. Now I need to set my reference point. So reference point one will be right here. And I'll put the same marker on the right side. Set point two will be this. Set point two. And then just click align. So now they're both oriented in the same direction. Now I need to move to synchronize crop. Put on the grid. And I need to align a feature I can see on both with the center of the grid, which will be this point here. I'm using the arrow keys for fine adjustment for panning. When they're lined up, I click lock pan. Now I'm going to turn off the grid and zoom out. Click on crop, synchronize crop. Now I can draw the rectangle on either side. I'm going to draw it on the latent. And then I click Apply. I'm going to go with a 60% border and just click the Add White Border. So now the two images have been cropped and a white border has been added to each. The Lock Zoom and Lock Pan is still on. So to do some annotations I go to Annotate. At this point you would pick one type of annotation to do. I'm going to show a variety just for this demo. So magnified views are on now. So to do magnified view you click on the feature you want to show in more detail. Drag to the outside and let go. You can alter the zoom factor and the size of the circle so if things don't look the way you want you can just edit the annotation. So that's how you would use magnified views. If you just wanted to use dots to annotate your image, you could put a dot on one side and then on the other. Then you can go back and forth. You can do the same thing with circles. You can do ridge tracing. Ridge tracing is found under pen slash ridge tracing. Freehand mode is good for going around sharp corners. Ridge tracing mode is good for gentle corners. In this mode, you just click on the ridge and click further down. Click again and you kind of piece by piece add in the ridge. Where the contrast is lower, your sections need to be shorter. And when a section is fairly straight, you can place your points further apart. You can change the color to do another ridge. To use the arrow annotations, you click down on the feature you want to label, drag the mouse out and let go, and then put the label on it.
if you want to add a logo, click on logo and then click where you want it to go. The logo files need to be pretty small. So if you want to go edit the size of your logo, just click on it. And if you want to make it 50% of the original size, you can do that. So that is how you would make your chart. Of course, you'd pick one annotation type. If I want to save these two images side by side as a chart, I click File, Save, Comparison View, and I give it a name. And I pick a file type and click Save. So as you can see, the chart is here in my folder and there's a history file with it. And if I wanted to place this into a Word template, I'll show you how to do that. So here is my Word template and this is one that I had from before. If I want to bring this image into my Word template, I can just drag it over. But what I need to do is size and position, text wrapping, I need to click in front of text and then I can resize it so that it fits in here. And then I could print this or fill it in, do whatever I need to do. So that's a quick introduction to how to create a core chart with CSI Picks. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out. Thank you for watching.